My name is Kathy White. This is Jay White. My husband and this is Colton. It's Friday morning, and I got up and I didn't feel too good. So I told Jay, I said, I think I need to call the doctor and uh, get checked out. Where's she staying? Well, you know, if you don't have any sharp pains or contractions. Yeah, you know, just come in for a checkup. Um, I finally got into the car. He put me in the front seat, and I was like, "Nope, this isn't gonna work." I said, "I need to go into the back seat." So I get into the back seat, and we start heading towards Mountain Home. And he probably asked me a good three or four times as we pass through Harrison, "Are you sure you just don't want to go to Harrison? Are you sure?" And I said, "No, my doctor's at Mountain Home. Like we, she said that we can get." Come there. I said, okay. We left the house and, uh, you know, I noticed she was a little bit pale, but I was just thinking, you know, from the, from the pain, I wasn't thinking too much of it. So just, you know, as we come through town, I was just assuring her, you're sure you're, you're okay. There's, this is not an emergency. You know, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just, just go on. I'll, I'll be okay back here. So we got just past all B, and I told him to stop the car. <laughs> I get out and I'm rolling around on the ground in somebody's yard. <laughs> you know, at that point, I know that right, something's wrong. It would take longer for an ambulance to get there than us to try to come back to town. I'm not really, still not understanding this is a life-threatening issue, but complicated it enough that we need to go to the closest place. Uh, and that would have been back to Harrison. So that's what it did. I got her in the car. You know, I said, we're going to Harrison. Yeah, well, we got here and pulled right up to the ER. And, I had some wheelchairs out front, so I got a wheelchair so she could get out of the car into a wheelchair and wheel her inside. And then just, you know, as soon as the, the nurse had seen what, uh, how she was behaving, how she was acting and the pain she was in, they were concerned about labor, but I like, no, I don't think she's in labor, but yes, so they took her right in. And, uh, I guess to triage, <clears throat> having trouble getting uh, blood pressure. And when they did get the blood pressure, there was a look of concern. So I was like, oh, so is it, is it high? Is it elevated? I'm thinking she's stressed. And uh, no, it's low. And uh, yeah, it didn't take but a few minutes and they had her in the ER room. So. They're trying to take my blood pressure and my vitals. And I'm kind of out of it by this point and where I was just thinking, I don't know, they should be fine. Like, I'm just kind of nauseous and feel like I need to lay down. There's nothing else wrong with me. This Friday morning clinic, I had seen a couple patients in clinic already, um, and I got a call from the ER. Uh, they said, we have a patient who we think is 36 uh, weeks pregnant, and we can't get a blood pressure on her. And they said, well, it's like 70 over help, um, and uh, she's, in, uh, she's in pain, and I think I heard 70, and I started running out the side door across the parking lot to the ER. Um, I didn't know where she was. I knew she was in the ER. <laughs> so I came in the trauma doors um, and, um, and saw her obviously hurting. Um, and, and I saw her husband in the corner. And I turned to him and asked him um, what was going on. And, and he said, well, we, um, we see OB and not home, um, but since Last night and this morning, maybe she um, she hasn't been feeling well. She's just, her belly's really tight. Um, and Bailey, uh, the nurse, told me um, that they were able to get baby's heartbeat. It was in the 90s. They couldn't get anything higher than that. Um, some of the other um, folks in the room were trying to get um, vitals and an uh, IV in her and. Um, so all this happened in a matter of minutes, and I think I said, uh, we need to get the baby out. The baby was born and handed off to Dr. Halstead, and Dr. Halstead um, was holding Colton uh, in his arms and giving him that first spanking, and he, uh, he said, um, I think he said, come on, little guy, come on, little guy. And, um, took him to the warmer, and there it was everyone holding their breath. Um, and um, I think we heard like a not a cry, but 
we heard him make a noise. <laughs> and then I started shaking. <laughs> All the adrenaline was just, okay, there's a noise, he's alive. It was, it was a, a crazy emergency that we um, learn about and hopefully don't see very often. Um, but um, really grateful that um, the whole team was there and knew what to say and knew what to do and moved and it was just um, it was definitely God that that had um, them in his hands um, but um, just you know, grateful that it happened when it did how it did and everyone who was here was ready Next thing I know, I woke up in the ICU and people were, you know, asking me if I was okay and then some people were congratulating me and I had no idea what just happened. So my placenta erupted and which caused internal bleeding and so, but I had no idea because I didn't have any external bleeding um, and so he was, and because the placenta erupted, he was swallowing and drinking the blood the whole time I could with as much blood that I lost and that he was inhaling, you know, stuff that um, she said probably wouldn't have made it to Mount or to Yellowville if you felt kind of been gone. So it's a good thing he, he didn't listen to me and kept going back. He, he made the decision to turn around. That and that all happened within thirty three minutes from the time from the time we walked in the door to the time they got him out this start and so we just want to say thank you to every single person that was working on Friday, April 15th, 2022. Uh, everybody just jumped right to and took action and did what they needed to do. And so thankful for it because uh, they're here today. They wouldn't survive if we kept going. So thank you.